Hey everyone, this is Lab 8. In this AP lecture, we'll be discussing the introduction to the skeletal system. The skeletal system has uh, various functions. The most obvious is to provide support for your body, to provide protection uh, for your body, such as, you know, your rib cage is protecting internal organs. Um, this is, uh, bones are gonna allow for movement to occur. Uh, muscles are going to pull on bones, which uh, allow that bone to move. An important function is also hematopoiesis, um, and there's this is the production of blood. Um, erythropoiesis is the production of red blood cells, and leukopoiesis is the production of white blood cells. Red blood cells, again, uh, carry oxygen, and white blood cells are involved in um, your immune system. And then also your skeletal system is going to act as a mineral reserve. Um, it's going to maintain an electrolyte balance, which is important for um, electrical signals in our body. But then also it's going to um, assist in maintaining an acid-base balance as well. You have... Uh, two types of skeletal systems. Your axial skeleton, it, which is highlighted in green in this image to the right, is all of your muscles that are associated with the vertebra, um, excuse me, all your bones that are associated with the vertebral column. Um, and then also you have the appendicular skeleton, which is highlighted in this purplish pink on the image on the right. And this includes all of the bones of your upper extremities as well as your lower extremities. When humans are born, they typically have on average about 300 bones. But as we become adults, uh, the average number of bones that humans have is actually 206. And so the question is what happens as you age? What happens to these bones? Why do we have less when we're adults? Well, as we get older, bones fuse together. And we'll see in later labs that, for example, um, some of your vertebrae actually fuse together and three, four, five individual vertebrae can actually fuse to become one bone when you're adults. The composition of bones is made up of two components. One component is organic and the other component is inorganic material. The organic material are all the cells that make up your bones, as well as the proteins and the structural proteins and fibers that those cells produce, in this case, collagen fibers. And then there's also an inorganic component called hydroxyapatite. And this is a, a complex salt that's made up of mostly calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. Now, anytime you see the word osteo in these next few labs, that refers to bones. That word just, the root word means bones. And we have some important terminology here that we should go over. First, osteogenic cells. These are stem cells for bones. They give rise to osteoblasts and osteocytes. Those are um, going to be important bone cells, bone components that we'll go over in this lab. And these osteogenic cells occur throughout the bone, um, but particularly in the periosteum, the endosteum, and the central canals. And we'll be going over what all these terms mean in this lab. Now, osteoblasts with a B here, these are going to be cells that are involved in bone building. And so these are going to Form, these are cells that are going to form bone. Um, they become osteocytes. Again, osteo means bone, cytes means cells here. So these osteoblasts form osteocytes. Osteocytes are mature bone cells. They are um, formerly osteoblasts and they became trapped in their deposited matrix. They function to remodel and respond to stress that you place on your bones. And these are located at a particular location called the lacunae in bones. Then you also have osteoclasts, which are 
bone dissolving cells. They actually dissolve cells um, in acid or using acid. And um, these do not give rise to osteogenic cells or osteocytes. The, this is actually going to break down the bone. But both of these components, osteoblasts and osteoclasts, are going to be important in building bone and also repairing bone. Now, as far as bones go um, on, a, on a larger scale, we can classify them into four different categories. Long, short, flat, and irregular. Long is defined as more long than broad. Example, this would be your femur. A short bone is bones with equal dimensions, so similar length and width. And you can find short bones in your wrist and in your um, ankle. Flat bones are relatively flat bones, such as your sternum. And irregular bones are bones that don't fit into any of these categories, and an example would be a vertebrae. And so what do these look like? Again, we have these long bones here, and so they, they're longer than they are wide. These are our short bones. This is a, a bone in your ankle, and this is a bone in your wrist. And these are roughly equally long as they are wide. Flat bones are going to have this relatively flatter component here, such as your scapula or your shoulder blade, as well as your sternum. And then these irregular bones, they don't fit in, into any of these other categories, so we call them irregular. And that would be, um, example would be the vertebrae, and then also this bone called your sphenoid, which is going to be in your skull. Long bones um, have an interesting morphology. When you are younger, at the end of these long bones, they are made up of cartilage. And that cartilage is called hyaline cartilage. And as we develop, this is going to form bone. This, this hyaline cartilage will form bone. When we become adults, we're going to maintain some of that cartilage, but this is only going to be used to reduce joint friction um, between two bones. Generally, um, the ends of our bones are called epiphyses, and the middle of our bone are called diaphysis. So we have two epiphyses and one diaphys, which is going to be in between there. Now, at the epiphysis, I'm sure you've heard of the word growth plate. This is an area that allows the bone to grow when you're a, a young person. That is um, called your epiphyseal plate, and that's indicated here. And as this bone grows and this hyaline cartilage creates more bone and that bone um, gets longer, we form this epiphyseal line, this line here that we also call, which used to be your growth plate, essentially. And so in adults, we have this really obvious epiphyseal line at the end of our long bones. And within our bones, we have two types of bones. Um, we have compact, which is going to be on the exterior of the bone and it's thickest in the center of the bone. And we also have spongy bone, which is going to be on the interior of the bone. And the structure looks different, but the composition is the same between these two types of bones. And we call it spongy bone because it appear, there appears to be open space um, between or, or within the bone. And then the compact bone you don't have that, that spongy look, that open space that, um, that you do with the spongy bone. And then there's also an important part of your bone called the medullary cavity. And this is, this is where you contain uh, bone marrow. And this is where you're going to have that hematopoiesis where you produce your blood cells. And um, you have uh, two types of, of bone marrow you have red and yellow bone marrow. 
And so let's look at some of these structures in some more detail here. We have our long bone here. We've got our epiphyseal uh, plate and epiphysius, and as well as our diaphysis here. Our epiphyseal line, that's our, our growth plate, essentially. And let's go back to that word periosteum. We see this osteo, osteo here, so that refers to the bone. And peri just refers to outside, think perimeter. And so the periosteum is, um, is going to be the outside of our bone. And we have that indicated here. So this is the most superficial layer of the bone. And this is where dense irregular connective tissue is going to um, be wrapping around the bone. We have osteoblasts and osteoclasts are, um, can be found here. And this is where we will anchor tendons and ligaments for muscles and for other bones. And osteum. Again, we have osteum, so this is referring to the bone. And then endo refers to inside. And so our end osteum is indicated here. That's the inside of our bone. And this is also going to be a site where dense irregular connective tissue is going to cover the bone, but, the, but now we're covering the inside surface. And it's connected to the periosteum. And we can also find osteoblasts at this location. Now on the ends of our bones, we have um, cartilage. And this is called articular cartilage. And this is where we're going to have um, other bones connecting. And so we need to reduce friction between those two bones at that joint. And this is why we have this cartilage here. And this is just going to reduce damage that's, that's done to the bone because of rubbing. Uh, flat bones are typically going to be used to protect soft organs. They're kind of sandwich-like in construction, where we have two layers of compact bone represented here. And we have, on the inside of the sandwich, we have spongy bone here. And this is going to help in um, um, absorbing uh, shock or absorbing some sort of blow. Uh, because we have these two layers of compact bone and this internal spongy bone. Now we have a decalcified bone slide. And I'm going to highlight some structures here that should look familiar to you. These are going to be our osteons. So these are those functional units of the bone. And within each osteon, we can see that there are those layering. We have that layering, kind of like what it looks like if you cut an onion in half. And this is called our lamella. And we have multiple lamella throughout here. And there's some other structures. So now that we know there's, we know where our osteon and our lamella are, we can see that there are some more familiar structures, such as our central canal. This is where the osteon is going to get its uh, nutrients here. And then we also have our lacunae, those those darker oval circles there that are going to house the osteocytes. But what we're not seeing here is the canaliculi, those canals that link the central canal and the lacunae. And so what we, what we can see from this is that um, from a decalcified bone, we can see the functional units of the bone. We can see the osteons. We can still see the central canal, um, the lamella, the lacunae. But what we're really missing are the non-living inorganic components of the canaliculi, those tunnels that connect the osteon to the central canal. That's what we're missing from, from this bone slide. Now, just to end, I want to give you some um, heads up on what to expect for the next practical quiz. On um, the next quiz, you should feel comfortable identifying the two skeletons, appendicular and axial. You should have a rough idea of how many bones a uh, human is born with versus how many bones adults have and what happens as we age as far as bones fusing together. You should feel comfortable 
classifying bones by shape, whether it's long, flat, short, irregular. You should be able to identify the different ends of the bones, the epiphysis versus the diaphysis. You should know the periosteum and the endosteum. You should know the different cells found within bones, osteoblasts versus osteoclasts. Um, what is a bone cell called? Osteocyte. You should feel comfortable identifying structures of a bone using both ground bone and decalcified bone slides and provide functions for structures within the osteon using a ground bone slide and a decalcified bone slide. Good luck.